You can now filter out your trades using this new volume indicator. I've had a number of requests for this one over the last few weeks. I know many of you over on Discord were talking about possibly combining it with the opening range indicator from last week or just creating a separate strategy altogether. So whatever it may be, here's the volume indicator. Now, before we get started in this video, I'm not really going to go over any actual setups because I personally haven't really used volume myself, I mainly made this indicator as a request to those over on Discord. So instead, what I'm going to focus on in this video is just how the indicator can be used to filter out trades and also give a bit of a refresher on the Predator's custom filter system. So with that, let's go over how this indicator works. All right, so first thing is how do we load this indicator? So we just right click on the screen, go to indicators, and you're going to find it in the Trade Saver folder and it's going to be called simple volume signal. And the way it works is we're just going to get a signal anytime our volume goes over a certain threshold. So when we go above that threshold, we are going to get a green arrow and also we're going to get an orange volume bar. Then when the volume starts to dry up a little bit, we're going to get a down arrow and it's going to be a blue bar. So that is the very basic breakdown of how this indicator works. But obviously we added some customization. So let's go over that. All right, so let's take a look at the parameters here. The first option is the simplest and it's just an above volume number. I think this is pretty straightforward. All this does is it gives us a signal if the volume is above this number. So here, any bar that's over 3000 is going to be colored in orange. So let's say we want to change it so only above 10,000. So we just change that. And then only the volume bars that are over 10,000 are going to give us that signal. And then for the second parameter, we also have an above volume average. Let's click out of this and just go to that. What this is doing is it's just plotting an SMA on the chart and it's just going to help us get our average volume. So by default, I have it set at a 200 SMA. You can change this to whatever SMA you want. I think a, a lot of people are also using 14, but change it to whatever suits your needs. So how this works is it's just going to give us a signal for any volume that's above this SMA. So let's change this to zero. When the percent above SMA is set to zero, it means that if our volume is directly on the SMA, it's going to give us a signal. So anything on or above the SMA is going to be considered valid. It's going to give us a signal and color the bar orange. If we were to say 20, that means our volume must be 20% above the SMA or higher. So here we have a few bars that are above the SMA but not quite that 20% above, so they're not considered valid. If you were to say 50, so that means it has to be 50% above our SMA in order to be considered a valid signal. So all this indicator is doing is when the volume is higher than our threshold, it gives us that green signal. This does not mean it's a buy or sell signal. It's just telling the user there is higher volume than usual. And then when it dries up and it's below that threshold, you're going to get a down arrow signal. Again, this is not a buy or sell signal. It's just letting the user know that the volume is starting to slow down and it's below our threshold. And of course, you can combine both of these so that both of these thresholds must be met at the same time before it creates that signal. So whatever customization you want to do, you have those options right within the parameters. But now let's head over to our Predator signals up here. And for those of you that already use the Predator, these are the same signals you are going to type into the Predator properties in order to automate or filter out your trades with this indicator. And don't worry if you're not familiar, we're going to go through all of that in just a minute. But first, I want to go over these options because they are going to help us with the signal system. What these options do is they're just going to be a data saver. So for example, if we unselect the show first signal only, 
and it's going to take a little bit to load, you'll see that it's going to plot a signal on every single bar. And this is just telling you if it's below the threshold, it's going to give you that red signal. And if it's above, it's going to give you a green signal. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I know there's been a few different trading groups using the Predator that have coded their own indicators. And those indicators are printing signals on pretty much every single bar or most of the bars. And it's causing a little bit of a delay within NinjaTrader. So I wanted to use this to showcase why you should try to code your indicators so that it's printing only the signals that you actually need. So as an example here, I don't even have the Predator loaded and just clicking on the chart, there's a little bit of a lag. It takes a little bit to actually move the chart. And that's because there are literally thousands of signals being printed. And that's just going to slow down NinjaTrader in general. So something like this with these many signals are, it's just going to bog down your NinjaTrader. So what I recommend when coding your indicators so if we open up our properties, if we show just the first signal, it's going to eliminate all of those extra signals. It's just going to print the first green up arrow. And if all the bars after that are green, it's not going to plot any new signals until you get that first red signal where the volume has dried up. And then you're not going to get any more signals until something comes back up above your threshold and then it prints just the first one. So now instead of having thousands of signals to loop through, now we just have a small handful of them and it's going to pick up on those much, much faster. So that's what this show first signal does. It's just going to print that first signal of a sequence. So in that way, we're not overprinting these signals. But just as an added measure, we also added a clear arrows on new session. And when we click this, it's just going to clear any arrows from any previous days. So as soon as the day ends, so here, 6 p.m. Eastern, it's just going to delete anything from the previous days. And that way, we're only keeping the most recent signals and it's an even less load on our system. So that's how this indicator works. Let's move on to the Predator and see how we can use this to filter our trades. All right, so here I'm going to show one example of how this indicator may be used as a filter with the Predator. But first, I want to be very, very clear about this. And just like I mentioned before, I made this indicator as a request from some of the members over on Discord. I have not really used this indicator outside of this video example. I do not know the win rate of this indicator, and I have not done any extensive testing on the performance of this indicator, aside from actually making sure it plots where it's supposed to. So again, I just made this indicator as a request, and this is just showcasing how to use it with the Predator's custom filter system. All right, with that said, moving on. So the Predator signal system is very, very simple. Just think of it as an on and off switch. So let's say we walk into a dark room. What's the first thing that we do? We turn on the lights. With the Predator's filter system, it's the same thing. Think of this up signal as your on switch. You're walking into a room, you flick the lights on. When you get this signal, it's going to allow trades to happen. Now we stay in the room for a little bit, and then we have something else to do. We walk out of the room. And unless you're made out of money, you're gonna turn those lights off. So that's what this down arrow here represents. It's just your off switch. So after you turn the lights off, the predator is not going to allow any trades to happen. But here, you forgot something in the room, you go back in and you turn those lights back on. So now again, the predator is going to allow trades to happen during this time after you have your on switch. And then once again, you leave that room, you flick the lights off, and now no more trades during this period until you turn it back on with that up signal. So that's all it is. It's just an on and off switch that allows trades or prevents trades. All right, so now to actually link this with the Predator, what do we need? First, let's double click on one of the signals and it's going to reveal the properties. I have a full guide on my website that shows what signals are valid to use with the Predator. It goes into a lot more detail. I don't wanna spend 
too much time going over the signals themselves. But just as a quick recap, what you want to see is numbers going up that are not sequential. So you don't want to see a tag and then one, two, three, four. You would usually have some sort of a gap in between signals. That's usually a telltale sign that it's using the current barcode. And that is exactly what we need. And the part that we're actually typing into the predator is the actual text part, anything before that current barcode. So in this case, it's going to be vol low and then vol high. That is what we're going to type into the predator. And then it's going to be able to pick up on those signals and then filter our trades. So again, check the user guide. It's going to go into a lot more detail on how these signals work. I don't want to make this video too long. I just want to showcase how it's going to work once it's actually loaded. So let's load up our strategy. So right click on the chart strategies. All right. So here I have the predator loaded. I just set up a simple reversal to get us into a trade. But now let's set up the filter system. So under the O2B auto entries, just go down to the custom signal section. We're going to expand that and we're going to expand the filter signal. And in this section, we're just going to type in those same tags that we just went over. And for the filters, you're able to have a long and a short filter. So that way you can separate your longs and your shorts if they have different signals. But in this case, because we're just using volume, they are going to use the same signals for both long and short. So we're just going to read them. To turn on your long filter, we are just going to type in vol high. To turn off your long filter, vol low. And then same thing for the shorts to turn it on vol high again we can use the same tag to turn both of our filters on and then to turn them off and once you have that just set up the predator with any other management that you want but as far as the signal system goes for this volume indicator that is all that you need so just hit apply and from here we're just going to enable the strategy before running the strategy always, always, always check the validation system. This is going to tell you if your signal is valid or if there's something wrong. So up here we have filter long on and off. So vol high is your on filter. Vol low is your off filter. They both have a check mark. That means it's reading them properly. Then down here you have your filter short on and off. Same thing, vol high for your short as a check mark, it's good to go. Vol low, check mark, good to go. If you see an hourglass, it means there's likely a typo or that signal does not exist yet. So just verify that signal is actually on the chart or that there are no typos. Again, visit the user guide. We have a whole troubleshooting section to make sure you guys can get through any sort of questions you may have. But for the last piece of the validation system, when it comes to your filters, you also have the filter status. And this is going to tell you whether longs or shorts are valid. So here you can see both long and short are off. That means straights are not currently valid and it's not going to take any trades. If for whatever reason you want to change one direction or another, you can click them, their buttons, you can turn them on or off but you don't have to, the predator is going to automatically pick up on whatever signals you set it to. So with that, we confirmed everything works. We confirmed it's off and now we're waiting for a signal. So let's just click play. Order submitted. Okay, so this went a little quick, but we got our reversal candle and then we got a filter on signal. So you could see up in your top left hand corner, both your long and short signals became valid at this time. So it entered the trade. And I'm just going to speed this up. So while we still have this green arrow and all of these volume bars are orange, everything is above our threshold. So our filter is going to remain on. And here we got our first down signal that is represented by the first blue bar. 
and you could see it automatically turned our filters to the off position. That means no other trades are going to take place inside here until we get a green arrow, but then we got a red arrow right after, so nothing became valid. So now you can see as we start getting arrows, it's going to turn our filter on and off. So we'll see if we can get one more trade in here. And here we got that down arrow right before it entered another trade. So unfortunately, turned it off. But let's keep going on. Order submitted. So here we got a green arrow with the reversal as well. It entered our trade. So it was able to filter out all of this in between and just got us in once we got that high volume on that reversal. So I'm just going to let it play a little bit. And maybe I'll stop out, but that's okay. This is just a playback example. It doesn't really mean anything. All right. All right, so I think we all get the point here. The filter system is just an on and off switch that allows or prevents trades. And you can use it with this indicator or many other third party indicators are coded the same way as well. But I think that just about covers everything. So I'm gonna cut the video here. I hope you guys found this useful. As always, take care, enjoy.